Welcome, everybody. Welcome to the Anaheim City Council. I'd like to call the meeting back to order. Welcome. Thank you. Good evening, Mayor Tate, council members, neighbors. My name is Kevin George. I've been an Anaheim resident and homeowner for the past 18 years here. There are two items I'd like to discuss with everybody tonight. Uh, the first one is the homeless working group. Uh, last Friday, I took that day off work. I wanted to attend that meeting. Um, you know, I think it's important to say first regarding that group that I really have no doubt that there are a lot of good people in that working group trying to do some exceptionally good things. There's absolutely no doubt about that after what I saw. The issue that I have with the working group is that, a, that from a diversity of perspective standpoint, I found that group lacking. And I know that that may not be a popular statement to make in this room tonight, uh, considering a portion of the crowd, but I have to be honest and speak my mind. As somebody who loves my city and wants to make my neighborhood the best place that it can be to raise a family. So with that in mind, I think, well, let me back up a moment. Because of that lack of balance in that group, a lack of different perspectives, I think the group instantly loses credibility. So what's the point of putting effort into something if it's not credible for everybody involved? So with that in mind, what I'd like to do tonight is ask the council to consider agendizing a motion to add a representative from District 5 into that group. District 5 is where I live. It's Councilman Fessel's district. He's got the largest portion of the riverbed in Anaheim. And so the neighborhood that I live in backs up to that riverbed, and most of my neighbors are affected. So I don't see the logic in having a working group that doesn't have representation from the district most affected. That's the first point I wanted to make tonight. The second thing I want to talk about, uh, it is that petition that's been going around. At this point, I'm sure everybody has heard about it or seen it, signed it, possibly been offended by it. I understand that. Um, but I want to talk about how we got to this point. So one week ago, so a couple of neighbors and I were talking about our futures in Anaheim and what, what our futures are going to hold for us. Are we going to stay? Are we going to sell houses? Are we going to move out of state? What are we going to do? And we decided to form a group called OC Residents United. That was one week ago. One week later, we've got 11,000 signatures on this petition right here. 11,000 signatures, if you count, who has signed this petition with the electronic signatures that approximately 20 of my neighbors have spent the last week of their lives going door to door collecting. So count out those together with 11K and that, that petition is picking up maybe 1,000 signatures a day on average. In my opinion, what this petition represents is a middle of the road approach and I'm gonna tell everybody why. If you look at the verbiage in this petition, if you actually took the time to read it and not just emotionally be ignited by what's here, there is a compassionate component in here, and I'm gonna tell you where it's at. We support helping homeless who are willing to do what's necessary to become independent, productive members of society. Now after that, for the portion that is service Mr. resistant- Mr. George, I'm sorry, your time is up. For the portion that's service resistant, that's where we're talking about this. So this is not the first step, but we need something for the portion that's not going to be helped. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome. Hi. Well, as you know, I'm against 26, no porta potties. That makes it permanent. And especially you, Moreno, it was your idea. And obviously, you're getting something out of it. And Mayor, why are you letting the city go down the drain? You say city of kindness? Okay, to who? To who? For everybody, the residents. We pay our taxes. I mean, sh I can't even keep, okay, you say you want to put porta potties? Can I keep a porta potty out of my in front of my house? No, code enforcement will give me a ticket. I can't even keep my trash cans outside in the front because of parents. Why do you want, why don't you put them in your district? District three in Westmont area. Why don't you? Yeah, yeah, I thought so. Yeah, well, why are you doing it? I like to know why are you doing it? No answer? But you know, Mayor, uh-uh, no. You know I told you I've been almost homeless. You know, and like Jesus said, like they always point out Jesus when, when it's convenient, he helps those who help themselves. Like he helped me. He 
help me? Dignity? I had a slum lord with two kids. Toilet broke down. He told me piss and crap in a bucket. Dignity? And you know what I did? Mm-mm. I didn't allow my children to do that. I went out, found another place. I worked. I didn't beg. I didn't do anything. I even cleaned fish. That's what I did. And guess what? They're hiring at McDonald's. And if I need to get a job, I'll go there. I flipped hamburgers, cleaned toilets. Why are you doing it? You're not doing it for the goodness of your heart and you feel sorry for him. You're doing it for a reason. I'm starting to get to know you even better. You see, you see, it'll backfire on you. They might show up in your neighborhood, Westmont area. Yes, Thank you. I'm sorry to take up all your time, but I had to say what I had to say. Think about it. And work as a team, not two against you guys are a team. There's no respect among any of you. No respect. Hey, that's what you guys need is respect. Talk to each other. Okay, so you don't agree. When is anybody ever 100% right? Thank you. Have a good one. I'm going to go eat. Welcome. Uh, Welcome, sir. Good evening. Um, I'm here today to talk about uh, the huge problem my neighbors and I are having uh, with coyotes in our neighborhood. The coyotes cannot be allowed to grow in numbers, and if less, left unaddressed, it's only a matter of time before another beloved pet is killed. We need to find a solution and find it soon. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome. Welcome. Um, good evening, council members. My name is Michelle Mayorga, and I'm a third generation Anaheim resident. My family has lived in the city for over 100 years. My father is 86 years old and has lived his entire life here, as have I. I am outraged of what I have seen and watched unfold before my eyes. The city has allowed the homeless encampment on the riverbed to exist. Not only does it exist, but some of you are now proposing to allow, it to, to allow it to grow and prosper by adding toilets, which will only invite more homeless to move here. By enabling them, you are supporting their drug use, prostitution, theft, and vandalism. My husband can no longer take his periodic rides through the area because he has had people try to push him off his bike. Other times, someone wa a naked man walked in front of him and he had to swerve to avoid hitting the man. Apparently, some of them now consider that, consider that part of the bike trail their property. These vagrants are now roaming our streets and in some cases are drugged out and are committing petty crimes. My 20-year-old daughter had someone knock on her window while she was at the red light <coughs> near the trail begging her for money. It startled and scared her and now she avoids driving that area altogether. I am not a heartless person and I understand that these people have mental problems and need help. I can only hope that we find a way to get them the help that they need. But by making it easier for the rest of them to live there, it will only make the problem worse. I can no longer sit by and watch the city go downhill. It is time to take our city back. I am a homeowner who has worked very hard to be able to purchase a home in my native city of Anaheim. However, if this continues, my family and I will be forced to move to another city or out of the state, which saddens me because of the roots that I have here in this city. At this time, I am, urging you, I am urging you to not allow the porta party restrooms to be installed as proposed on item six, 26 of your agenda tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Good evening and council members. I'm Trevor O'Neill, resident of Anaheim Hills for 22 years, here to speak in opposition to item 26. The Santa Ana Riverbed is quite simply not a place to live. It was not designed for human habitation. And I do not believe we should be taking steps towards making a place where people are not supposed to live in the first place more hospitable for them to be here. The Santa Ana River Trail is a public resource, and the public's use of this resource is already dramatically restricted. 
Placing portable restrooms at a public access site will only serve to further restrict public use of that trail. The county is already committed to a plan to address the needs of the homeless population in the riverbed, and part of that plan is providing access to restroom facilities and showers. Let the county undertake the effort they've promised to do. It's not our place to do so. Now, I also want to address the criminal element that Councilmember Fessel so emphatically spoke of at the last meeting and echo his and Councilmember Murray's call for action now to address it. There was a county report published last month that showed almost 30% of the homeless population in Orange County had been released from jail or prison in the last 12 months, and nearly 30% of those individuals were released subject to Prop 47. And so this criminal element is indeed significant. So despite the legal challenges and settlement agreements and jurisdictional complexities that we have uh, as to what we can and cannot enforce and who's responsible for doing so, we can still patrol. We can have an increased presence in and around the riverbed area to deter criminal activity from occurring and to be able to immediately respond to crimes being committed and we can increase police presence in the surrounding neighborhoods to send a message that this criminal element, that criminal activity is not welcome in Anaheim. And regardless of the cost, public protection comes first. We need to find a way to do it and make it happen. Thank you very much. Thank you. Councilmember Marino. Mr. Daniel, just a quick clarification because I want to make sure I got the numbers right. So you're saying that, or you're saying the county is saying that 30% of the homeless are a function of the release from Prop 47, the voter approved initiative, and the realignment? Or I just want to make sure you got that right. We got that right. No. He's Mr. Fitzgerald. Mr. Fitzgerald. Jeez. Point of clarification, Mr. Fitzgerald, please step back. Please step back. Just for a moment. Be reasonable. Thank you. The report I'm citing published by the county indicated... Mr. Fitzgerald, wait. Please, please back up and give the man his space. That's just common courtesy. Please. He wouldn't do it to you. If you don't, I'm going to ask that you be removed. Just please step back. Further. Come on. Please step back. You can speak next. Now, Mr. Fitzgerald, I'm going to ask that if, if you don't step back, I'm going to ask that you be removed. Okay. Mr. Neal, please. Thank you. The county report, which is published online, uh, indicated by memory, 28.9%, perhaps nearly 30% of Orange County's homeless population, which was done in a survey over the last right. several months, have, have been released from jail or prison sometime in the last 12 months. Of that approximately 30%, approximately 30% of them were released subject to Prop 47. So 30% of 30%. 9%. 9%. So it's, uh, I, okay, so... 9% of the homeless population... 9% is a function there. of Prop 47, the voter-approved initiative. Correct. Okay, I just want to make sure I got that right, because 30% sounded like... That's what the report like, says. I'd be happy to provide yeah. a link to it so you could review it. Very, very good. Please Thank do. you so Thank much. You. Now, unfortunately, I live in the flatlands of Anaheim. If I was lived in Anaheim Hills, like our previous speaker, and was a neighbor of uh, Mayor Tom Tate, I would probably get quite a bit of a little extra time instead of like uh, what happened at the last council meeting. Anaheim population is over 60% Latino. Six of the seven council members are white. At the last council meeting, the Anaheim City Council, white supremacists, Tate and Vanderbilt, prevented almost 40 Anaheim Latinos from having their rights to free speech by not allowing them their three minutes of public comment.
These un-American actions by the city council are consistent with their vicious attacks on the homeless and their dishonoring American service members who died protecting our country. Thank you for your time. Welcome. <clears throat> I'm short, too. <laughs> um, thank you for letting me speak. My name's Kathleen Van Horn. I moved to Anaheim two, two months ago. Uh, I'm a homeowner home now, and I have the unique perspective of three different approaches towards the porta potties. I'm a recovering alcoholic. I have 35 years of sobriety. <laughs> thank you. It was a tough fight, but I did it, and I am very proud of it. I'm a homeowner. I'm also a church administrator, so I live my life with kindness, compassion, and justice. And I can tell you that with the 10 years that I have been working in the church office and giving out food to homeless people, I have seen more and more of them die and get sick. And I think by putting toilets available to them, we are just extending their lifestyle and not giving them any desire to change it. Toilets are not the answer. There are other resources available, and the money that you're going to spend for putting up toilets could possibly be spent for counseling and finding other avenues for them. But to me, it's just a way of having more of them die and get sick. There are toilets there. I don't know if you've been to the riverbed. I've only been an Anaheim resident for two months. But I ride my bicycle, and I ride the Coves Trail, and I actually did ride down the, the riverbed. You know, I did it at 7 in the morning. I felt a little threatened, but I saw many of them sleeping. But I still feel that it is not the, the, the compassionate way, and it is not justice to put toilets there for them. Now, I volunteer my services if anyone... You know, if I can work on any committee or anything to help come to a right solution for this, I do have the, the perspective of the triangle. I have sobriety. I've been there. I know where they're at. I'm compassionate. I work in a church office. I'm a deep Christian, and I'm a homeowner, so I can see everyone's perspective. So if you want me to work with you, please let me know, and I would gladly offer my time and talents. Thank you. Well, my name is Sal Rios. Uh, I'm 35 years old. I lived in Anaheim all my life. I really never thought I'd ever find myself having to come to this extent to come address an issue of Anaheim. Uh, I basically think Anaheim's a great city, and I hold them to a very high standard. But um, I live very close to the issue at hand. Um, I live next to the Cove, which is very beautiful, by the way, but you just go down a little bit, and it's not so beautiful. So um, I don't know what it's going to take to fix this issue. Um, uh, it's basically gone out of hand, and I don't know what you're going to do. And I realize that uh, probably nothing's going to be done for a very, very long time. Uh, my concerns are basically public safety. I have two daughters, a six-year-old and a three-year-old. Uh, I'm also very religious as well, although that topic gets talked about a lot, so I don't really know how that has to deal with anything. But um, uh, really, I, I just I'm here to basically say that uh, you know I, I, you can't do anything about it. But obviously, adding a toilet is only going to make things permanent. So I don't really know what it is you guys are going to do. Uh, I don't believe that's a solution, so I'm against it. Um, the only thing that I've witnessed that I fear is response times from the city of Anaheim have gotten slower. Uh, and I know because I've had to call for instances. I'm not going to uh, basically elaborate on what they were, but if you have a need to call the police, obviously not good. And I've seen people get um, assaulted by the homeless uh, as they were posting garage sale signs. So um, Anaheim was never like this before. I don't know how you guys allowed it to get to this point, um, and I don't know what you're going to do to fix it, but um, I sure hope you do because the last thing I want to do is have to sell my house and move. Uh, I lived here all my life. I'm an immigrant. Uh, of my dad was born in Mexico, and we strive on working hard and basically um, you know, driving yourself to be the best you can be in this beautiful country we call the USA, and uh, I don't think that handouts are the way to get it. You've got to do it on your own. So that's all i got to say. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome. Thank you. Hi, um, my name is Janet Saldivar, and I'm here because I want to tell you, Moreno, 
and Mr. Tate that um, you guys voted for districting. Um, you, uh, Moreno actually sued the city of Anaheim so we can have proper representation and we are not being represented in District 5 because you Mr. Moreno have uh, that policy council homeless meetings and you're not providing our council that our, we as residents are going uh, to uh, asking Mr. Fessel for help. You're not including him um, in our problems that we're having. I already told you I've had a homeless lady walk up to my three kids, harass them in our own driveway. I've had my recycled can stolen, my son's stroller stolen, uh, my car has been vandalized, and here I am um, reaching out to all of you. Um, this uh, uh, porta potty, permanent porta potty thing is not going to work. Um, I had a friend yesterday that called me. She's like, Jeanette, I have a friend, and no, I don't, no, not a friend. I have somebody, I met somebody at the park. She's, she's homeless. She came from Las Vegas. She has six kids. Can you, do you know of any help that you could, um, you can give me a number so they can help her? I said, no, what is she doing? So you're, you guys are basically opening the door for homeless to come. Um, um, and that's not right, you know. They already went into my property. They stole my cans. They went inside where I have my, my recycled cans. What are they going to do next? We're not, we as residents are not safe, and we demand that you guys do not vote no on, these, on item 26. We're tired. Um, I know that you are saying that we're the city of kindness, but people are taking advantage of that. And, and we work so hard for what we have. Just talking to many, many property owners and many friends that I have, they're, they're ready. They're so disgusted with the city that they're, they're planning to sell their houses and leave. And that, that's where, that's where what residents are. If not, none of us are here to speak on, uh, they're, if they're not voicing out, I'm actually voicing out for them because you guys know that I talk to a lot of people and that's what the message that they're getting to me and especially you Moreno, they're mad at you because you are not doing what you said that you, uh, you're just doing uh, something for your own purpose. Councilmember Moreno. Just as a point of clarification, because it's been brought up a couple of times about the working group, which I'll speak a little bit at Council Communications about. Uh, but only uh, because of the Brown Act, only three council members can be in any particular body at any time that is not a regularly scheduled meeting of the council. Um, so the council fully approved the membership of the um, policy working group. Um, Councilman uh, Vander Mayor Pro Tem Vanderbilt uh, stated clearly that his signature issue for himself this year has been the homeless uh, issue, so that's why uh, I approached him and Denise Barnes on the west side. Um, certainly th these issues are important. It was not to disrespect District 5 um, or Councilman uh, Fessel, uh, but only three council members are allowed to sit there. The council did choose to add an additional resident last uh, meeting, and the, the recommended person by Councilman Murray was from the west side. So um, the council has fully approved the actions of the working group, so I just want to make sure that everyone knows that. And we are under the Brown Act, only three members of the council uh, can sit in any particular body. So that, that's just a state legal question. Um, yeah, Mr. Mayor, Please. if I may. Please. Mr. Mayor, I'd just like to respond real quick, if I may. For a point of personal privilege? Yeah, just it was announced why I recommended a resident. Um, I would just like to offer that we consider adding a representative, a resident representative from you District know, 5 as well. So we, I'd ask that we, we bring could that talk back. This, we could talk about this other public comments. It was a point I will, of but I just want to respond to all residents are here. It was a point of personal privilege here. from uh, Councilmember Marino because he brought up his name. Welcome, ma'am. My name is June Hamsey. Uh, I live at 3122 Glen Holly Drive. I live in West Anaheim. And I'm here tonight to speak about the property at 910 Western Avenue. It has been vacant for some time. The homeless have taken over. They've moved in. They are, um, I think you call them squatters. They have lanterns in there at night. The property, ha the, the, the weeds have overgrown. This is a million dollar property. Um, 
It affects me because it is taking the value of my home down. The police say they can't do anything because they're squatters. The, uh, nobody can do anything. I, I, I don't understand that. I, if I miss my mortgage payment or I don't pay taxes, I'm not going to be living in a million dollar house. I'm going to be out on the streets. So I don't understand that. That's what you guys are for. That's what Denise said she was going to do. Now she's got in a big black chair and everything is the way it was before. I, I, I don't understand it. You guys need to put yourselves in our place. We are property owners. We're taxpayers. We don't need portable toilets at the, the river bed. If you do that, you're going to have every homeless person from Los Angeles on uh, in Anaheim, and we've got them on the, the bus stops. They got shopping carts. Nobody can touch the shopping carts. They have more rights than we do. Like the one lady said before, I can't leave my trash can out. If I leave my trash can out over a certain time, I get a ticket. What's up with that? I mean... Come on now. The, the, uh, the properties in our neighborhood go up for sale, and somebody comes in and flips it, and all of a sudden it's a rental. People don't want to live there anymore. You guys aren't doing your job. Mr. Mayor. Denise, you promised us. Please. I, I, I don't um, want an apology. Ma'am, ma this isn't a debate going back okay, and forth. I this understand. is public comments. I don't want an uh, apology. All I want you to do is what you said you're going to do before we voted for you. Okay. Right. Hello. Man, you guys got your work cut out for you. Uh, my name is Tim Parney, and... We are resident managers, me and my wife, of a mobile home park on Rampart on the city's edge of Orange and Anaheim. And I just wanted to make you guys a little bit of aware of some of the things that we're dealing with. Um, we have a community of about 203 spaces. In the last 14 months, we've had 160 bikes stolen in 14 months. Um, we're finding needles everywhere. It, it's, it's really become to the point we have 12 people that we know of that have either moved or have their home up for sale because they, they're afraid for their kids. They have came in, they knock out all our street lights on certain parts, and then they hit it real hard at night. Last week, just three nights ago, we had 18 incidences. And the problem is, is that we're scared. We're very scared. And I understand the police is doing a phenomenal job, but they just don't have the resources. So I just wanted to be able to give you a little bit of input to not necessarily the bathroom issue, but the whole issue in general that it, it's, it's getting way worse. And I just wanted to let you know. Thank you for your time. Thank you. a really good pen. Welcome. Hi. Good evening. Um, my name is Barbara Hershey, and um, I am the captain of the neighborhood watch in my neighborhood of over 151 homes. Our homes back up to the riverbed. And so I'm here to try to represent an advocate for them. We are all homeowners. We pay our taxes. We vote. We maintain our properties. We abide by our local laws our state laws, our federal laws. But who's protecting us now? We have worked for these homes. We have worked to pay them off. Do you realize how many people in our area want to get out? And it's all depending upon what you guys decide to do. If you bring in those porta potties and you bring more homeless in, there's gonna be flight from our area. And it's not gonna be just white flight. It's gonna be flight. Our home values are going down already talk to the real estate agents. Ask them what our values are like now. That's all I want to say. Thank you. Well, 
Welcome. Thank you. Uh, my name is Chad Hoffman, <clears throat> and I've been a resident of Anaheim most all of my life. Uh, my parents still live here, and I, I chose to stay here and raise my kids here. Uh, they go to uh, elementary and high school in the district. Um, and I continue to invest in my neighborhood. I've had friends who have become homeless, um, some due to, you know, poor choices, but some due toward, toward uh, just bad luck. Um, and I do appreciate those who are here who have a concern and care for the homeless in the county and our city. Um, I do appreciate that. Um, I'm all for solutions for those who want solutions. Uh, my concern is that by enabling long-term homelessness, this is not a solution. Um, I'm not coming to a conclusion on the bathroom topic, but I have a concern that by building bathrooms and showers and services for our homeless in our riverbed, city, and county parks is the first step in making these homeless encampments permanent. And this will encourage many more homeless to come to, the Orange, to Orange County and to Anaheim, as this will just be comfortable enough to stay homeless long term. And I fear that that is not a long term solution. Uh, we've seen this in Hawaii, New York, and San Francisco. Um, Hawaii has become a place, or was a place, where people would save just enough money to take a one way flight because they knew there was. Um, public land there they can live on. And with Anaheim, you don't need a one-way flight. You can just come here. So I'm a long-term resident. I've had 50 friends move out of state or out of the Anaheim area, maybe move to the hills or out of state. And I would love to stay here long-term. Um, I'm just concerned about our long-term solution for it. I'm not knocking the advocates, and I, I do appreciate their compassion. I wanna, I'm coming here to actually learn and listen. I've not made up my mind on all topics. But I'm concerned that you know, many of my opponents will just label me as heartless. And so therefore, many citizens like me will fa fear coming here and sharing their own fears. Um, just because the homeless and school-aged parents and workers are not organized, I ask you all to be very thorough in your assessment and weigh these important decisions along with your task to serve the city of Anaheim. Thank you. Thank you. Um yeah, well said. Uh, thank you for your appreciation. This is a very, very difficult issue and no easy solutions to it. Thank you.